What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. It's Drew Gray here. I am finally, finally, finally giving y'all my Q&A teacher edition. And I asked a lot of questions, well, y'all asked a lot of questions here on YouTube and on Instagram. So I'm finally answering those questions for you all. I get teacher questions pretty much every single day, as well as um, Texas teacher questions. I just want to say though, y'all, I don't work for Texas teachers. I know I put the video out pretty much, what, two years ago. I went through the program about three years ago. I went through the program summer 2016. And so, I mean, a lot has changed since then as far as the program itself and the company itself. I don't work for them though, I never worked for them. So I only shared my personal experience. So I wanna say a lot of the questions that people ask me on that video, I can't answer because I don't know and I don't work for them. So I say that with all due respect, like, don't come for me, don't be mad. I'm just saying I don't work for them so I don't know the logistics and I damn sure don't wanna give nobody the wrong information. So the best thing to do is definitely contact Texas teachers yourself if you have real questions about the program. So, without further ado, let's get into the Q&A. Okay, so I actually got a lot of questions that kind of repeated themselves. So I am going to answer as many as I can, especially the ones that are not obviously like repeating themselves. So, um, I'm starting with would you suggest becoming friends with other teachers if you're the new teacher on the block? This is a very good question. Um, for me personally, I'm gonna say like there's a thin line between like personal relationships and work relationships. My first school that I was at, I worked there for two years and I can honestly say that I only developed maybe two, two real friendships. Um, two people that I actually would confide in, I trusted, I had their number, like I would actually confide in them. So I don't really say to make friends, but I would definitely make associates and build, you know, a team that you definitely trust. People that you can confide in when you have work problems, people that you can come to just to vent. Because dealing every single day is a is a different situation at a school. And so having somebody that you work with that you can confide in, vent to, um, express yourself, I definitely think that's important. But uh, I don't know, using the term friend, uh, that's kind of loose. I will say that the school that I'm at now, I have some great, genuine, genuine relationships with um, a few of my coworkers. And I know that it's developed over time and I know like they legit got my back. So. I don't know, I'm kind of iffy on that, I guess, but I don't think you should force it. I definitely don't think you should force and make friends with people that you know you wouldn't be friends with outside of work, if that makes sense. Next question is, what to expect your, I guess, during your first year of teaching as a young teacher? Expect everything. There is really nothing that you can plan for. I will definitely say your first year is not what you think it's going to be. My first year, I had, my first year was my hardest year of teaching. To be honest, um, yeah, I was given all of the classes that were severely low. They were inclusion classes, meaning um, I had a co-teacher, they were sped. And so I had a lot of students who struggled severely when it came to learning. They had a lot of different learning disabilities. And so as a first year teacher, you get those kind of students, you're not prepared. I don't have a, a certification in sped. I don't know how to teach those types of students. And so it was definitely a learning process for me that first year. What to expect? Um, crying, tiredness, uh, laughter. I definitely think for me, my first year was um, the hardest to part with my kids. Like I, I developed like a really strong relationship with those students and um, like those are my first babies so I would definitely say you get like kind of attached to your first group of kids you always remember your first group of students was it hard to find a job or was it hard to find jobs after completing the program I will be on or in Dallas the end of July do you think it's too late to get hired? I shared this in my Texas teachers video I only had two interviews and I only got one of the jobs so like thank the lord that it came through 
and I got hired in August. I signed my paperwork like August 3rd and had to report to work August 5th or August 5th I signed and August 8th I had to be to work. It was something like that. It was a very short, short window. So I definitely don't think it's ever too late to get hired. There are teachers that get hired in the middle of the year, so don't give up. What do employees look for in first year teachers? Also, any resume tips to help you stand out? Um, for me, I was always honest. Uh, they know it's your first year. They know you don't know what you're doing because you never taught before, right? Unless you were a sub or you, you know, you have some type of classroom experience. But I definitely think employers know that they want young, innovative teachers. They want teachers who are going to come in and bring something new and something fresh to the, you know, to the learning environment. So I definitely think being yourself, um, don't lie. There's no need to like try to up yourself. We all know that you're a first year teacher. So I wouldn't lie. I was very honest. I was truthful to who I was. And I told them that I was creative and that I learned quickly. And if I was given the opportunity, I would do my best. And I got it. Um, resume tips. Uh, resume tips. Ooh. I mean, if you have like special qualifications, anything to make you look glowing, and I'll say it and put that. If you was like in honors or in any clubs or any leadership things, they want to see, I guess, that you could lead because you're leading your classroom in essence. So I guess anything like that. What are the types of teachers of tomorrow? Should I look for certified jobs now? I wouldn't say that. I feel like once you are close to completing the program or once you have completed then start applying i waited till i finished the program and then i applied so this question is do you have any tips for what to focus on during study time or any resources to be helpful this is for the texas teachers test or the content exam actually so for me i did not uh i didn't study because my degree is in english and so my content exam that i took was in english so i was very confident very secure in my knowledge because that's my degree like i know english i know literature i know metaphors and simile like i know those things so i was very confident in that area but i will say if you are going into like a general study or I don't know, like a, you know, a subject that you're not too familiar with, definitely study. You want to pass. If you feel like you're not a good test taker, study. Do some, uh, like, test taking tips, whatever you feel comfortable with. You know yourself. So if you feel like you need to study, I would study. There are definitely uh, resources on the content exam website that are free. So you don't have to pay for anything. I know for the PPR I took, I did study. And... I used the resources that were available and they were free. Grade would be ideal in your opinion to teach. Okay, so I've only, well, I'm only certified to teach 7th grade through 12th grade. And so I definitely don't want elementary kids. I definitely don't want to teach like social studies and science. That ain't for me. But, uh, so definitely not elementary. But I do love kids, don't get me wrong. But, uh... For me and my teaching style, I want a more mature group. And eventually I want to teach college, college writing. So I definitely want a more mature audience, which for me is high school. Uh, I ain't gonna say they the maturest, but they are a little more mature than, you know, seventh grade or fifth grade, fourth grade, where you have to be a lot more bubbly a lot more hands-on artsy crafty type stuff i know like i taught 10th grade this year and we would do like little projects that required coloring and stuff like they was not hype they wasn't into it and it's because you know they think they grow on this for me ideal would be seniors <laughs> to do like a senior lit class or like a senior writing composition class i would love to do that but uh I'm cool with my 10th grade. Cool with English too right now. Um, this says, I have a few questions. Okay, girl. Um, I was kind of, okay. How do you balance work and play? I do a damn good job of balancing my work and play. I will tell you that. Like life is short and I can sacrifice a day of sleep to have a good time. 
So there's been plenty of times that I've only gotten two or three hours of sleep because I go out or I go hang with my family or I spend the night by my cousin or whatever it may be. Or I just go to dinner and I'm out talking till the wee hours and morning. Me and my cousin have done that several times. Just been in the car talking for hours. But to me, that is worth a lot than to just work, work, work and never enjoy life. So it's definitely important to to have that balance. And if you've been following me on my channel, you know that I work a lot. I just let go of a job. So at this point in my life, it is very important to me to live my life being that I'm so young and I don't have many responsibilities. So I wanna, you know, I wanna experience what life has to offer. So balance and work and play is very important to me. Same person. What kind of school do you prefer to teach at? Public, private, or charter? I've only taught at a public school. Uh, I've heard, don't know how accurate this is, but I've heard private school teachers get paid less. So I don't know. So that probably won't be a reason for me to go teach there. Uh, and I don't know about charter schools as far as teaching either. Uh, I know in New Orleans I applied to a charter school to teach. Didn't get it. But, uh, yeah, I've only known public, so I guess as of right now, I would prefer public. How is the pay in general and in Texas? I don't know about in general like other places, but I know in Texas, I can't complain about that. Of course, we could get paid more. Like I see a lot of different people in education that get paid a hell of a lot. And to me, teachers are like the most vital in the school. So you don't have a school if you don't have teachers. You know, so I feel like we should be getting paid more, definitely. Um, there's a, a bond out or a bill out to pass to get paid more, you know. But uh, am I surviving? Yes. Do I think I should be getting paid more? Hell yes. Uh, I will say like most areas, well, I don't know y'all because I don't live like all throughout Texas. I only live in Houston. And I only know like the surrounding districts in my area, they all start over 50,000. Okay. Uh, what is the hardest slash easiest part about teaching? Uh, the hardest part, ooh. To be honest, the hardest part is being micromanaged for me because I feel so confident in my subject field. I feel like I know what kids need to know to master a skill. Like I know what they should start with. And uh, like being micromanaged and being told what I have to teach when it has nothing to do with anything, I have problems with that. That's hard for me. I struggle with that a lot. Uh, yeah, I like to, I trust my gut and my instinct and I know what the kids need to know. But easiest, the easiest part is teaching. For me, like actually going up there every day and like teaching what I'm so confident in and like what I know I love, that's the easiest part. And having kids, oh my God, my kids are so amazing. Having kids that trust me and like the relationship that we have is just like makes the teaching so much more easy. But that's the easiest part. Currently in school right now is to become a middle school teacher. I have one year left. The biggest issue I have is that schools in my area are not diverse enough for me. In high school and middle school, my schools are very diverse. However, for my method classes and placement schools, they are majority white and it makes it hard to relate to them or my coworkers. Did you ever experience this and how did you overcome okay. it? So I kind of did struggle with this. Yes and no. Uh, my first year at the first, or the first two years, the first school that I was at, I struggled with the uh, the coworkers. My coworkers were not diverse, but the student population was extremely diverse. I connected with the kids. I personally connected with the kids. They saw a brown, a brown person. I saw a brown person. We connected, you know. But as far as my coworkers, there were not as many people of color at the job. There were a few Hispanics, maybe. I don't know, maybe five or six black, and the rest were white. So it wasn't a it wasn't a very diverse population as far as 
the employers or the employees, the the teachers. But at the job that I'm at currently, it is extremely diverse. Um, we have Indian teachers, we have Asian teachers, Hispanic, Black, White. We have everything, and um, the student population is majority Hispanic and Black. And so obviously, I connect with those kids the little brown kids. I couldn't work at a school where I don't feel comfortable in and that I can't connect with the students in. I can teach all kids. Um, I will say like all populations love me, but if I can't connect and make that impact on a, a little black girl and she knows that she could be like me, I'm not really doing justice. So. For me personally, I have to work at a school where it is heavy black population or, you know, a, a diverse demographic because I want to make an impact on my people and I want to help. I want to help my people. I want to show little black girls and little black boys that, you know, you can be successful and you don't have to fit a stereotype of a teacher. And, you know, it's funny at the school that I'm at now, so many of the kids be like, Miss, how you a teacher and you got tattoos? And I'm like, because, hey, society told you you couldn't have tattoos. That don't mean you can't be what you want to be. So, that, that's really important. Ah, do you recommend finding a summer job or is it important to take advantage of the downtime? This is my first year teaching summer school. And, uh, I mean, I don't know. I feel like that's up to you personally. I'm a money person. Like, I, I like to make money. Especially, like, if it's worth the time. Like, to me, work at summer school is definitely worth the time. It's only four weeks. It's only Monday through Thursday. I still have weekends off. I still have July, all of July off. So, uh, I personally like working in the summer. <laughs> I like working year-round. So, what are the essentials for your classroom? Uh, I love your channel by the way girl keep shining oh thank you girl. my first year honestly I had a lot of stuff given to me because my family works in education so I was so blessed and thankful for that thanks to my people for that but uh I think you need like I don't know I don't know because I teach high school so I don't have like that much decoration as far as like an elementary class would need um, and like elementary classes have a lot more space and have like a little classroom library with like a chair and stuff. Uh, I don't Essential know. for me is like tissues, definitely hand sanitizer. Um, I have candy for the kids. I definitely give like incentives. So I always have candy. Last year I used to have snacks like chips and a cup of noodles. I used to have all kinds of stuff I used to give to the kids. Uh, what else is essential? Definitely some arts and crafts stuff, glue sticks colors because the kids might not have those things scissors things like that tape um most of those most of those things that the school sometimes provides for you so you never know you, how did you go about selecting the area that you have that you lived in in texas what apps or websites if any did you use for apartments um so i had family that lived in rosenberg so when I moved to Rosenberg, I moved in with a family member. And so that's how I ended up in Rosenberg. Uh, but as I lived in Rosenberg, I started to explore Houston and realized that I wanted to live in the heart of Houston. And so where I am currently, I don't remember what I used, but I guess apartment guide. I don't know. I don't remember, to be quite honest. But uh, I put like a list of apartments that I wanted to look at. And this was the first apartment that I viewed and I fell in love with it. It was like perfect location. It had everything that I wanted. So I was like, so we worked in both public and charter schools. And if so, which do you prefer? I haven't, only public. Uh, how long is your average school day? I work, ooh, it varies, honestly. Sometimes I work 6.30 to 2.30. I'm still sick. So you constantly have to take home work grading papers lesson plans and if so how long does it take you to complete it i will say uh, i don't bring work home often to be quite honest i try to use my i really try to use my time at work for work because it's important for me to once i leave work i leave work at work and i don't bring stress and problems 
and all of that into my home life or personal life but sometimes yes I do have to bring home lesson plans that I have to complete or I do have you know essays that I have to grade that I didn't finish at work but it's not often um, any advice for new teachers I feel like you can't prepare for what you're gonna expect you can prepare for your first year this is my third year teaching and I still like I still try to figure out what I'm doing to be honest um, I go back and forth a lot with the micromanaging and trusting my heart and what I know is best for my kids and um, I feel like your first year teaching you're definitely gonna be told what to do you're gonna be told that you have to do this you have to follow these plans you have to go with your team you have to do this and now as a third year teacher I kind of just do my own thing and I feel like my results have confirmed my decision with that meaning if I didn't go with my gut and follow like my way of helping my kids they wouldn't have been as successful as they were like this year was hard for me it was this was my first year teaching in high school and so uh, the group of kids that I had this year oh my god I connected with them too so much just like my first year of teaching in seventh grade but this year was hard because I had an accident because I had just moved back to Houston um because I just was going through a lot dealing with a lot and um this was the first year that I actually actually lost a student and I had no idea how to prepare for that I don't deal with loss good period uh, like at all and so to lose a student that was really hard for me because as a teacher you're sitting in front of a classroom those kids trust you they look up to you they confide in you they look at you as a protector almost and like it's funny my kids sometimes they would call me mama Jew and I'm like, I'm too young to be all mama, okay? I'm not trying to be nobody mama, but like in a way, those those are my babies. And so to lose one of them and have to face my kids and they're looking at me for answers or they're looking at me, how do you deal with grief? How do you deal with this? And I don't know. That was really hard for me. It was really difficult to face my kids. I was scared. I was so scared to come in front of my kids and talk to them after they had just lost their peer, their classmate, their friend. Um, and he was such a, oh my God, he was such a special student. He was so special to me. And um, like we connected. <sighs> okay. On a lighter note, we have a few more questions. Uh, do you have any tips for finding a job after completing the Texas teacher certification? What did you use to study for your certification exam? I answered that. Uh, tips for finding a job, I would say look in the area, look at the surrounding districts. You can pull up a district map of Houston and you can see all of the districts that are in Houston. I believe we are in region four. Houston is region four. So if you pull up like district region four, it'll show you all of the districts. And there are a lot, like, I could be exaggerating, but definitely like over 30 districts. Hey, well, thank you so much for sticking with me throughout this video. I know it's a long one. So thank you so much for watching. I hope I answered everybody's question uh, as best to my ability as I could. And I will see you guys in the next video. Wish me well.